Um, so before we start, just everybody knows there's uh, donuts back there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Donuts. Yeah. We want no donuts yeah. remaining at the end of uh, class. Leave the box if you're the last one in there. So uh, yeah, so please do consume things. Um, okay, so we're going to talk about a couple things today. Um, uh, we're going to go over some logistics stuff first, talk about what's, uh, what, we're, what, what we're doing um, and what we're doing next week, uh, talk about uh, the polls for a little bit, but before that, uh, Dr. Patch is going to tell us about the LIDAR conference she was uh, just at, give us a little overview of what she was doing. Um, after that, we're gonna, I want to go talk about the, our in-progress poll for a little bit. After that point, we're gonna, uh, Todd's going to go over some uh, additional... Uh, safety training in this and that. We have a bunch of friends that have a bunch of stuff. So we're not going to fly these bigger units today, but we're going to start orienting you guys to how we're, how we're going to use those guys and set them up and everything. Um, and then uh, that's all good. And then again, afternoon, if you guys want to go fly the blades some more and get some more practice, that's great. Uh, about four of our guys, uh, several of our guys are um, on the Owens Valley water trip, so they're not here this week, unfortunately. So we have more, we have more space than we normally do. But um, that's the plan for today. That's the plan for today. So I uh, want to start off with just saying what's going to happen next week. So I'll send an email out later today or this weekend. But just so everybody's clear, so next week we're not meeting here. So I'm gonna reiterate that. Next week we're not coming to class. We are going to go to Dan's shop down in Van Nuys. So about an hour drive south of us. And uh, for our morning session, we're going to walk through the shop. We're going to talk to them about what they do, see, see what they're building, the units they're building, and how they, they do their shtick and all that good stuff. Um, do that for a bit. Go have lunch. And then we're going to go to the nearby uh, airfield, Apollo 11 airfield, um, which is, you know, we're talking, it's been nice. We're talking, you know, near the Sepulveda Pass kind of area, Sepulveda Basin down over there by the airport, uh, Burbank Airport. Um, and so... Uh, yeah, so we so we do that, and uh, if you guys have, I know some of you guys have work and stuff in the afternoon you have to get back to. If you guys can't make it, it's totally cool. There's no no pressure. I think it'll be a great opportunity. But um, uh, uh, we'll plan to be done there by three. So you guys could be back here. You know, who the heck knows the traffic, right? But maybe four ish, something like that. So that's the plan for next week, and I'll send it out. But just so you guys know. Well, you can't see the box still. I had the address up there, but um, uh, Dan, any, any special instructions? Do you have a big parking lot we can all fit? Big parking lots, big white building. Yeah, if you miss it, across the street is UPS. Directly across the street from the big, the giant UPS distribution center. The part that uh, Dr. A skipped over, we buy every week going to the local. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, what are we doing? There's a brand new. Um, UAS manufacturer from South Korea that's introducing two of their heavy lift multi rotor aircraft. I'm trying to get a foothold here in the U.S. and see if there's anybody who can use this law enforcement, the military, the news media, to you guys, and academics, or motion picture television, commercial production. So they're doing a formal presentation out there. I encourage everyone to ask as many technical questions regarding power supplies, ground station controls, telemetry, sensor packages, operation supply, battery chemistries, power requirements, just anything that comes to mind that you would want to know about how to build this aircraft and put it into use. So, yeah, so we'll bombard them with questions. So we'll get there, we'll have lunch and we'll get there and they'll be setting up. They're not going to start right when we get there, so you guys can be asking them questions while they're setting up. You could, we don't want to overly bother them, but right, it's a chance to sort of um, see a new manufacturer that's trying to impress, impress you guys, right? So it's a, that's an awesome opportunity, right? Because they'll probably answer whatever you ask. Sometimes when they get all old and famous and wealthy, they don't have time to answer our questions. But these guys really have an opportunity to answer your questions. So I think it's great that next week, any other point? In? So I think it'll be great that next week you guys have an opportunity to both uh, see um, a working shop and a company trying to sort of be an up and coming uh, player. So that, that'll be a unique opportunity to see that side of things. Um, so great. Uh, and so just to be clear, um, uh, neither Dr. Patch nor I can drive 
we can drive each other, <laughs> but uh, but she won't be here. But but um, well, I can't drive any students with me, right, in my own car. So you guys, I would I would encourage you guys to carpool and all this and that. Maybe when we take a break, you guys can talk about who needs a ride and how we can work that. But but I'm just uh, not allowed unless unless we get a you know rental vehicle or something. I'm not allowed to drive. Faculty aren't allowed to drive students on these continuous trips. So that's next week. And again, um, we're shooting to get there at 10. And my recommendation, as with anything towards that way, is you plan to get there crazy early. And if you're super early, you can go get a coffee and this and that, right? Way better to plan to get there early rather than get stuck in some crazy traffic and be an hour or so delayed. So la let's see, last week, I went to a very similar area. It was a meeting at 9 o'clock at the Skirball Cultural Center, which I don't know why we would take a meeting at the middle of the Sepulveda Pass at 9 a.m. Uh, on a weekday in LA, but we did. And I went the whole distance really fast. The last uh, four and a half miles took over an hour to go, right? So, so hopefully that's not gonna happen, but you know, some truck overturns and we're kind of screwed, so, so plan. And um, you know, it's wh however the traffic reports to you guys, um, it might be faster to go to 118, might be faster to go to the 101. You guys can just check uh, before you before you go. So that's next week. Um, I think next maybe we'll have Dr. Patch talk a little bit about what happened with the old uh, uh, conference. Thing. And I, I can scroll through pictures. Just tell me which ones you want me to jump through. Um, okay. So last week I wasn't here. I spent one day at the International LIDAR Mapping Forum in Denver, which was a conference I want to say had probably a thousand people there from all over the place. A lot of vendors, a lot of really cool talks. I only got to go for one day. I then went to Washington, D.C. to the American Shore and Beach Preservation Association Coastal Summit, which was interesting in a whole different way. Well, this wasn't technically a UAV conference. It was a LIDAR conference. UAVs were everywhere. So everyone who's making LIDAR, which typically is put on an airplane, right, is realizing that everyone's moving to UAVs. So their LIDARs are getting smaller and lighter and better, right? So there are a bunch of software people there. There are a bunch of UAV manufacturers there. There were airplane people there, pi uh, pilots. I mean, it was completely overwhelming. The talks were fantastic. You had everyone from anthropologists saying this has revolutionized our discipline, right? So now they're finding all of these ancient um, uh, civilizations in the Amazon, places they've never been able to get to before, because now they have UAVs equipped with these really amazing <coughs> LIDAR packages, right? So again, we had, there were a lot of people there that were just kind of getting into it, similar to me, like, okay, I've been doing coastal hazard mapping for a while, but now with this awesome technology, look what I can do. So there were a lot of people there that are just kind of getting their feet wet with LIDAR, so it was really a great way to meet people and see what their experiences are and see kind of what software they're using. This is the information that I collected <laughs> in my one day there. Um, I'm still kind of working my way through it, but just some cool stuff. This is the LiDAR puck we're getting. It should be here in two weeks, which is really exciting. Um, the yeah, yeah, Velodyne. Yep, so a lot of people are really excited about this. There were a number of vendors there that were creating other kind of software packages and little, um, things to put it on, you know. Specifically the puck? Specifically for the puck, because everyone's really excited about it. The day of the conference, they released the puck light, which I kind of hit myself, like, oh, this would be even better. So we talked about maybe getting the lighter one, but I think we're going to stick with the bigger one. That's something really cool if you want to check Same that size, out. just lighter weight. Yeah, exactly the same size, exactly the same specs, but lighter. Um, this was the proceedings from the conference. If you want to check it out and look at who was talking and what they're doing, you can check that out. I, uh, another thing I want to say, there were so many vendors, and you know who was manning most of those stations? Recent graduates from drone programs, programs that had UAV departments. They had learned all about the software. They're kind of on the cutting edge of it. So the two guys at EV were excited to meet Paul, the people from PIX40. There were so many young people there. I was really impressed with it. They had just come out of these programs, got really great jobs with these companies, and that it's just, you know, bodes well for you guys. So EV has some really cool stuff. They have this brand new fixed wing that they're putting out soon. Not this one. Um, 
but I get to hold it. It's really <laughs> awesome. I'm like, oh, this is so cool. One day I'll be able to fly it. The little EVs are really cool. Again, these guys came from students from Vermont. I guess they have a really good program hmm. at the University of Vermont. Um, so again, you guys can check all this stuff out. There's all these different applications, right, for LiDAR for mapping with UAVs. So my mission while I was there was really to find a, a LiDAR, a bathymetric LiDAR, right, that would go through the, the near shore zone and help me map, right, that intercoastal waters, right? But they don't make that yet. But everyone I talked to, they're on it. They said in the next year or two, it should be light enough to put on something like the UAV. Right now, they're really big and really heavy because you have to have a very powerful laser to get through water, right? So it's just too big right now and clunky to put on these things. I'm going to show you a couple pictures of some of these yeah. really awesome. Again, these are some talks. I videoed some of the talks, but the video turned out so bad. I won't torture you with that. <laughs> but these are just some of the really cool fleets that these companies were presenting. They are doing everything from mapping the Titanic underwater. They mapped it with LIDAR, so you can actually go through and pan around and go through the shipwreck and see it within you know, centimeter detail of everything that's at the bottom of the ocean. It's really unbelievable. They're using it to look at um, telephone wires, looking at oil pipes and things like that. A lot, of, I'm sure you know all what everybody does with it. You do it. Um, they're using these UAVs for all kinds of cool stuff. Go ahead. Got the satellite one, keep going from the top. This is a really cool LIDAR. So if, if this is a 16 beam, this one's a 32 beam, but you need a, a much bigger UAV to uh, put that on there. But this is the company that thinks they're going to come out with a bathymetric LIDAR in the next year or two. Dr. Pass, yeah. just in case somebody doesn't know what LIDAR Sure. So LIDAR is actually, some people think it's light detection and ranging that stands for that, but it's actually light and radar put together. So what it does is it sends out beams of light and then it bounces back up and it records it. So it gives you really accurate elevation, right, in pictures. You can create a 3D point cloud of elevation with your LIDAR unit. So it takes our photogrammetry that we do with just the camera and makes it that much more precise. Regal? Yeah, this is this one was really awesome. I walked away, I'm looking at it. This one had a LiDAR package on it that was really awesome. It could hold the bathymetric LiDAR. You could put that on this guy. I'm like, oh, this is great. Maybe I'll buy this one. Mm -hmm. Guess how much that cost? Million. Million dollars. So I, I, have yeah. a, I have a video for that if you guys want to watch it. I, I had the guys run through the specs uh, last year in, at a, a conference we were at. And uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy. They're from Germany, right? Yeah. 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 About no. how big is that? There's no perspective in the picture. No, it's about... It's like the size of the table. Yeah. It's Ours is bigger. Yeah. <laughs> it was so impressive. It was so impressive. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and so they're, a, they're not a drone company. They're a, they're a LiDAR company. But because so many people were dealing with, you know, asking about this, they just made this drone specifically to carry their, their LiDAR heavy payloads basically. Right. And they don't they also don't have a bathymetric lidar yet, but they said within a year it'll be in their scope of things you can get. Go ahead. Oh that's just not, I was really impressed with that one. This is another one made by Trimble. Also very cool. The Trimble guy was really serious, not really nice. <laughs> um, that sounds like Trimble. Yeah. But their products are really, really neat. So again that one's about this high. Oh, there's happy hours. So we're really getting excited about this one. Can I interject something on that? Yes. Does, does anyone here recognize the frame? Just because they cosmetically covered up the... Uh, it's like an S1000, right? No? Anybody familiar with Tarot? Oh, I see the one. Yeah, it's a 960. So it's a, they just bought that frame motors and props and everything from China. And put their top on it? Yeah. Well, that, thing, GPS to give you, that thing to give you kind of like a backstory. Dr. Anderson can talk about it, but Trimble, you guys all, Trimble's like a very well-known GPS-based company used for high-end, you know, uh, essentially uh, surveying, and so it was put us all on the ground, and so, yeah, it was just like he was saying is everything's now starting to go to the air, and there's all these other companies making it, so instead of them integrating something that goes on to someone else's product, they're going, no, 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 we're just going to build our own, you know, so that's that's how a lot of these bigger companies are starting to go now, it's yep. like, no, we want to have our own line and you can buy from us instead of 
kind of buying this piece that helps you on your other products. Yeah, yeah and, what, and what they typically have done is they've typically just taken their technology and bought another company or bought elements of a company and just slapped their stuff on, on that mm -hmm. platform. Yep, that's happening with the software as well. So we're trying to figure out the best software to use for all this great data we're collecting with our UAVs. Right now we're, we're working with PIX4D, and I met with the PIX4D guys there. There's also a talk by um, the ArcGIS people who basically said, PIX4D, you know what you're doing. They bought, they didn't buy it, but they use their PIX4D um, software and they put it into a toolbar and it's being released, I think in the next couple of weeks, oh, really drone to map. Yep, so their drone to map technology, it was kind of hush hush for a while that it is exactly PIX 4D. But the, PIX, but the ArcGIS guy was like, yeah, it's PIX 4D in there. Because I was asking him everything I need. Yeah. And then I went, over, scaring to, them. I, yeah. <laughs> I went over to PIX 4D and they're like, they told you that? <laughs> Data. Especially you guys in classes and stuff, yeah. Right. I don't know. Do I have any more pictures? Uh, it's a helicopter. Oh, yeah. This one's really cool, too. There were just a lot of really cool toys there. The next one. This one was really neat. Keep going. And again, this was not a UAV conference, which is what I think is really interesting, right? But so many different groups are realizing what they can do with their UAV, especially when you attach a LiDAR unit to it, which again gives you this really precise mapping, right? And yes. A question on the LiDAR stuff. So one of the things that we were facing with the Pelodyne LiDAR mm -hmm. is that it's essentially just a sensor and it's not storing data. Right. right. So how was that addressed? If so yeah, they addressed it with, you know, they have other ones. So Output from it. Is my you question. know, yeah, I'm not really sure. Okay. We'll see. So in Phoenix is F E N I X, right? No, Phoenix, like Arizona. Oh, it is? Oh, okay. I'm thinking of a different company. Okay. 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 Yeah. That's the, that's the yeah. So, so that's all stuff we'll figure out when we get it. I'm not really sure. Cool. Yeah. So again, I encourage you to take a look at all this stuff. There's a lot of really neat things. Yeah. Next, I want to talk about where we are with our surveys. So. The online poll has only been active for a bit less than a week, so we turn it on on Sunday. So uh, we have about 134 respondents, right? Our goal is an ambitious goal of about a thousand responses. So we're, you know, we're gonna leave this open for another six weeks or so. So that's that's pretty good if we're getting 30, 40 people a day or so. That's that's about right. Um, but we definitely need you guys to push them to your networks and and uh, you know. Those places, play, uh, we haven't we haven't heavily pushed it yet in terms of um, uh, various. We had a little news right up. We sent to SUAS News, and they kindly put that out. And some of our friends have been putting it out, um, uh, announcing it. But we haven't had a real hardcore push. I'm kind of more dribbling out the announcements uh, over time. Um, we're hopefully gonna the the PR department here, our, our press office. Um, is, try, is going to do a press release for us. I thought we were going to do it this week, but they were busy with uh, the prosthetic dog legs that Dr. Hampton is making, so that's cool. So the, the press is all covering that story today, which is great. So probably early next week we'll release our press release. And um, that's really just trying to get a, some kind of little story somewhere, just so that there'd be the link, so we can get that out to a wider audience and hopefully you know another 50 people would click the link kind of thing. Um, so yeah, so if you guys haven't pushed it, it would be great if you guys could post it to different fora or, or what have you um, and keep that going. The other thing though is uh, all the face-to-face the -face stuff. So I um, wanted to ask how that's going. How, how, how going okay? <laughs> One of you guys is going okay? Tim is going okay. So how about this, Any, um, did you guys, I know you only did five in sort of the first pass. Um, anything seemed to work better than, any approach seemed to work better than others, or where, where were you doing, where'd you do it, Tim? Uh, I did it out at a mall. The mall, okay. Yeah. Just so public mall. It was, it was okay. really good, just like, and student, you know, 
right. Did you wear a CSCCI shirt or anything? Yeah, I had a volunteer okay. shirt. Okay, good. <laughs> That's even better. <laughs> That's even better. It's better. I was checking the waves down at the Ventura Promenade and huh? just found some people sitting on the beach, sure. on the bench. Cool. Like you said last week, find people that are like relaxing, not on the yeah. Not 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 20 minutes late for the meeting. I actually found some people were like kind of excited to do it because it wasn't like a political public opinion right. or something about like trying to get them to register for yeah. voting right. or this or that. Like, a lot of people were surprised. But yeah. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of like, excitement coming out of this technology. Cool. Good. Yeah, and like I said, when we do our annual fall polls every four years in the presidential election comes down, those guys, it is a bit more challenging because they, at that point, you know, another another six months from now, people are going to be oversaturated with people asking to sign this and this and that. But for you guys, I think you're, you're doing okay. Okay, so so some malls, some, some uh, beaches. I, my first stop was my daughter's preschool. Preschool? Okay. Okay, cool. Good. Sure. Cool. <laughs> Any other, more, anybody else try other types of books? Rebecca? Home Depot. Oh, you did it inside Home Depot, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, and I had to buy all the PVC pipes and everything. And then there were guys, well, I did it outside too. There were guys standing there waiting for their, I guess, stuff to leave. Oh, delivery? Uh huh. And so I yeah, got a couple of minutes. Great. Inside. Cool. All right, great. So again, um, yeah, so, so now that you have the first couple, um, great. Uh, once you try to get some more, again, my suggestion, it tends to work better if you bring maybe a couple clipboards so that if you do find a couple guys sitting there and you hit them, um, you don't, they don't have to wait for the one person to finish. That's usually sort of the death knell. And they go to people walk away or, or what have you. You do have more surveys stuff out of the ones that never bought or used the uh, I have whatever's left in the back there. Um, and and you guys can print more. Uh, we can print some more, but th those are I just printed those the first the first pass up for you guys. Um, so okay, great. So yeah, so I recommend CSUCI shirt or or sweatshirt or something. This looks a little bit more official. Um, and great. And so the other question is, when you guys tried, how many people refused? Okay, good, good. So so make sure you guys are jotting that down too. I asked five people, and the five people did it. Okay, cool. Um, uh, I think we, we want to spend some most of our time today getting uh, playing with this stuff and, and looking at stuff and hearing from everybody. But I just want to run real quick uh, with you through the initial results. Now, this is just the initial results, right? This is not this is not our full amount. Uh, you know, hope we get a lot more respondents. But at least now we have you know well over a hundred, and so we can maybe start to look for some initial patterns. Uh, just just to get a sense. So, um, for example, if we look at our if we look at our first uh, uh, no, I'm good, man. Thanks. You can sit down. Uh, if we look at our first uh, guys, so drone, UAV, or other, most people call the military predator-looking thing a drone. When we drop down to the more funky-looking thing, it becomes unclear, right? So people, so it's roughly roughly fairly even between the people that call that a drone, a UAV, and they have a, they think it's some other category of thing. Um, when we talk about a more traditional looking platform like the Phantom, uh, it's, uh, it's drone still seems to be the popular term. Again, this is, this is only a subset. We haven't, we haven't broken it down by all the demographic stuff. This is just aggregate. Um, but uh, little teeny micro dude, little weird looking thing. Again, similar to the sort of bird looking guy, which it's, it's a much more even distribution. Then when we get to the fixed wing, people don't seem, and this is what we saw last year, people don't seem to tend to want to call a fixed wing a drone. They seem to think, think of that, even though, it's, even though this is a fixed wing and this is a fixed wing, um, that's been a pretty consistent pattern we've seen so far. Um, and then when we drop back down to the smaller quad, again, it seems to follow the same pattern as the, um, as the uh, Phantom. So that's what's going on there. Uh, do you guys want to jump to, we don't have time to go through all the questions, but any particular questions you guys are wondering about? Privacy ones, but number, let's see. Uh, are you concerned that UAV may be a threat to privacy? So. Um, 
not very concerned or not concerned at all. It looks to be about 40 odd percent or so, maybe maybe about n n not, not quite 50. The most common response is moderately <coughs> concerned. So about a third of the people, okay, so about a third of the people are, are moderately concerned. And, uh, and then the extremely concerned is, you know, very and extremely is about 25 percent, a little less than 20, a little less than a fourth of the folks. Um, what else? Uh, are you concerned that UAV may pose a, a danger to aircraft? Uh, oh, here it is right here. So um, again, uh, uh, moderately concerned is the most common response, and so about a third of people like that. But if you act, add up moderate, very, and extremely, so if people are at least moderately concerned, that's a large proportion of folks um, are, are of that opinion. Uh, let's see. Oh, bought it. Okay. So, um, are current FAA restrictions appropriate? No. So two thirds say no or so. Uh, let's see. Purchasing. Which one is that? Uh, have you ever personally operate or let's see, where is it? Um, uh, I've purchased or received a UAV gift. So, uh, more than half of the people now, again, there's especially this first respondents, we hit some various drone for us. So you can imagine that these people are more likely than Joe Blow. But, but even within, even within that, that sort of initial push, still more than half or just about half people have never um, obtained a UAV. And so then recall, uh, uh, these questions are now conditional. So these are only the people that said they'd purchased or received one. And uh, most of the people are using it for their own use, not for their business or something like that. Um, uh, most people are doing quads, right? Multi-rotor, that, that's dominating the, the user category. Uh, and then, um, so this is a little bit different from last year. So last year, the, the cheapest category was by far the largest. I suspect this is because we hit some professional drone folks that, that are more likely to buy the more expensive stuff. And I think as our population grows, as our, as our polling grows, this, this category is going to um, continue to uh, expand. Um, I don't know. What else do you guys want to look for? Um, have you ever personally operated one? So again, even though we're t we're, this initial pass was targeting what you might think are, would be the UAV using community, still it's about half the folks have never responded to one. So when we eventually start to look at this, these are gonna be great questions to sort the data, right? So people that have never flown one of these units, are they concerned about privacy? Versus folks that have flown one of these units, are they concerned, or, or, or well, that's not a fair, are they concerned to the same level as folks between those two categories and stuff like that? Um, uh, yeah, so anyway, so, that, so that, that's a little bit of taste of the kind of stuff we're starting to get. Um, did anybody ask you guys any questions in terms of, so you did the poll, and then afterwards, a lot of times when we complete the poll, then they go, hey, I feel sort of stupid that I didn't know about those questions or whatever. Did they, did they ask you any questions about that stuff? No? I had a couple people ask how they can see the results, and mm -hmm. I, it's already on the survey, but I kind of just like yeah. pointed it out. So yeah, tell them the blog, yeah, tell, yeah, yeah, good, cool. And they can always, people can always email, you know, that email at the end of the poll. They can always email, and then I, I put them in a folder. I'm not going to save their emails or something like that, but, but just whenever it's done, I'll send an email blast to everybody that also specifically asked to be notified. So they'll, they'll get a copy that way if, if they're so, so interested. All right, cool.